Some shareholders of electric power utilities in Japan think the company should get out of the nuclear power business. However, their proposals were all rejected. Tokyo Electric Power Company and eight other utilities that operate nuclear plants held their annual shareholders' meetings on Thursday. All the companies faced shareholder proposals calling for decommissioning reactors or withdrawing from nuclear power generation. Shareholders of Kyushu Electric Power Company met as anti nuclear campaigners protested nearby. The Nuclear Regulation Authority has confirmed that two reactors at the utility's Sendai plant meet regulations introduced after the 2011 Fukushima nuclear crisis. The firm plans to restart one of the facilities later this year. Kyushu Electric President Michiaki Uriyu said at the meeting that the, his firm aims to restart the reactor as soon as possible while ensuring safety as the utility's basic principle. Shareholder calls for withdrawing from nuclear power generation were also turned down at a meeting of Shikoku Electric Power Company and Kansai Electric Power Company. Top nuclear expert says reactor training lacking. Jun, 24, 2015. The top official of a group of nuclear energy experts says the Fukushima Daiichi accident has made it difficult for Japan to properly train enough nuclear specialists. Hiroshi Atsuka, the new president of the Atomic Energy Society of Japan, told reporters on Wednesday that every research reactor housed at universities and other institutes across Japan is idled. Atsuka said the operators of those institutes are unable to meet regulations that were revised following the nuclear accident. He said the budgets and staff for the research reactors have been cut. The president called the situation very serious because of the challenges that both decommissioning and restarting reactors present. He said his society will put together proposals to address the problem. Atsuka said the cause of the Fukushima Daiichi accident is well understood, but investigations have yet to determine what exactly is going on inside the reactors. Atsuka said the society will continue to study the accident. He said its members, along with officials of the Nuclear Regulation Authority and power companies, will discuss how to apply their findings to reactor regulations.
Japanese and South Korean officials have failed to find common ground on an import ban on seafood from Fukushima and nearby prefectures. They gathered in Switzerland to try to negotiate a deal under the World Trade Organization's dispute settlement procedures. The two sides wrapped up their talks on Thursday in Geneva. Leaders in Seoul are prohibiting the import of marine products from eight prefectures. The measure follows the Fukushima Daiichi accident. Japanese officials say the ban is unjustified due to its lack of scientific basis and violates WTO rules. They say their South Korean counterparts argued the measure would ensure public safety, and they've asked them to submit their expert opinions about on-site inspections in Fukushima and other areas. Officials in Tokyo say they'll continue to press for the ban to be lifted. And they'll, bring to, they'll be able to bring their complaint before a WTO trade settlement dispute panel if an agreement isn't reached by late next the month. The final phase of World War II, the Imperial Japanese military and U.S.-led allied forces engaged in fierce battles throughout the Pacific. Okinawa was the site of the last major ground confrontation of the war. Japanese military operations there ended 70 years ago today. Prefectural officials organized a memorial ceremony at the Peace Memorial Park in Itoma. Around 5,400 people participated. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and U.S. Ambassador to Japan Caroline Kennedy were among those who attended. At noon, participants observed a moment of silence. Mokuto. Okinawa Governor Takeshi Onaga told the audience that residents of the prefecture continue to bear a heavy burden. Okinawa Prefecture accounts for only 0.6 percent of Japan's land area, but it is home to as much as 73.8 percent of the U.S. military facilities that are in Japan under the Japan-U.S. Security Treaty. This excessive burden continues to affect people's everyday lives and Okinawa's development. Onaga called on the central government to halt efforts to relocate a U.S. base within his prefecture. Prime Minister Abe expressed his sense of mourning for the victims of the battle. I think about the countless sacrifices and fathomless blood and tears shed on this land, and I calmly bow my head, filled with pain and emotion. Abe said he will do all he can to reduce the military burden on the people of Survivors Okinawa. Survivors have spoken out about their experiences. Some of them collected footage to remind people of the atrocities that take place on the battlefield. Age has slowed many survivors, but some still work to maintain a record of the tragic events that unfolded there. NHK World's Jun Yotsumoto has more. And again, a warning, this story also includes images that some viewers may find disturbing. A little girl carries a white flag. The body of an old woman lies in the street. These images of devastation were taken by members of the U.S. military in Okinawa 70 years ago. A surviving U.S. soldier called the battle, all hell rolled into one. Footage like this was hard to find three decades ago. A local group purchased it from the U.S. National Archives, foot by foot, with money donated by people from across Japan. The Okinawa Historical Film Society has collected 110,000 feet of film, about 50 hours worth. The group held screenings across the country to inform children about what really happened during the battle. But two years ago, the group was forced to disband. Most of its members were too old to continue. Kinuko Ishihara was a member of the group. She was seven years old when the Battle of Okinawa was fought. 
Ishihara still visits schools and other places to show the films and share her memories. The agony and sorrow on the countenances of the people on the battlefield speak more eloquently than words. I think that's where the power of this footage lies. Ishihara feels a special sense of mission. The battle claims the lives of every member of her family of six. Not a single picture of them remains. Their names, carved here, are the only way she has to remember them. Her mother, nine-year-old brother, and two little sisters were killed while fleeing the storm-like bombardment. Ishihara found her mother and brother among piles of bodies in a sea of blood. My mother's entrails were hanging out, my brother's too. But I couldn't believe it because we'd promised each other. We'd always be together in life and death. Wake up, mother. Wake up, brother. I shook them. But when I looked closely, they were so cold. Ishihara says she feels it's her duty to share her experiences on behalf of people forced to die in misery. The group donated the films to Okinawa's prefectural archives. Most of them were digitized last year. They are archived here, available for anyone to watch and copy, free of charge. The first screening of the digitized films was held at the archives last Saturday. The audience was bigger than Ishihara had expected. It included people who lived through the battle and young people learning about it for the first time. Civilians were the biggest victims. I came to understand that by looking at the films. I think everyone should know about what happened in the past and understand it. Then we can build a peaceful world. More people should see images of the Battle of Okinawa, one of the ugliest in history. Then Okinawa would be better understood and help contribute to world peace. Ishihara hopes the films will continue to tell the story of the Battle of Okinawa even after she's gone, and help people around the world learn its harrowing lessons. Jun Yotsumoto, NHK World, Okinawa. The United States is to deploy tanks, artillery and other military equipment in eastern and central Europe. U.S. Defense Secretary Ash Carter says the move is necessary to counter threats posed by Russia. Countries in the region are concerned about possible Russian intervention after it unilaterally annexed Crimea from Ukraine last year. Carter met with his counterparts from the Baltic states in Estonia on Tuesday. He said the U.S. will spread about 250 tanks as well as armored vehicles and other equipment across the former Soviet states of Estonia, Lithuania and Latvia, as well as Bulgaria, Germany, Poland and Romania. American rotational forces need to move more quickly and easily to participate in training and exercises here. Carter traveled on Monday to Germany. He said the United States will provide weapons to NATO's new rapid reaction force to help bolster European security. He said that U.S. support would include intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance assets. Russian President Vladimir Putin said this month his country will add more than 40 new intercontinental ballistic missiles to its arsenal.